said to you, what would happen if all your lyrics came true, everything you wrote came true? Well, most of everything I do write has come true and, and is true today and is happening right now. English, is but, that what you meant? No, oh, I was like, I'm saying on the thing about the Jews, the situation, I understand yeah. everything that he coming from with the ghetto and all that, because I was raised in the ghetto. I was raised by a single parent, my mother, and I'm doing all right now. I'm in college. And most people at age, I'm 19 now, and they say black men only live to be 18. And if you're doing good to live over 18, then that's an accomplishment in life right now at this day and age in 91. I'm trying to say things on his album, like shoot the Jew and all that. I understand where he's coming from, but it's like some people might go out and just do that. How would he feel if that came true? Cube. If somebody shot a Jewish person for my record, no, is that, is if that somebody, yeah, if somebody took you literally, took those words and, and didn't see them as poetry or an expression of, of general anger and said, take it, okay, take I'm going to go shoot the Jew. Taking rap music literally for everything that's said is like taking TV literally. You have TV programs and you have the news. With rap music, you have the same thing. Of course, the TV programs are in most parts fiction and the news is real. And with my records, you have both. You have the news and you have the fictional things that that ha that happen and that's a part of life in a lot of cases so it'd be pretty dumb to do everything that your lyrics advocate of course okay next caller janet from california janet hello ice cube how you doing i'm fine um i want to know do you get along with nwa in any kind of way at all well i've talked to a couple of guys in nwa uh, you know, the reason that we we were separated was because I felt that the person that, that I'm talking about on the record separated us. And your you know, manager. Yeah, and I understand that certain people like Dr. Dre, you know, if I get this correct, are finally waking up and smelling the coffee, and now they're looking for their money. Something that I should have told them to do. Something I told them to do back in 1989. Does that answer your question? Very proud of you. Thank you. Okay. Next caller, Eric from Georgia. Eric? Hi. How do you feel about the beer company that pulled the commercial you endorsed because of your anti-Jew lyrics? Well, Anti-Semitic lyrics would be a nicer way of putting it. Well, the lyrics aren't really anti-Semitic, and I... I can't understand, you know, I listen to people like the Simon Wiesenthal and Rabbi Cooper, and I, if I'm, if I'm, am I getting this wrong? Are they saying that it, they condone what Jerry Heller or some of these other people have done to me? Do they, do they say that it's all right for Jewish managers to, to get young black kids with talent off the street? without the, the uh, without lawyers and without people that was helping me and my benefit to make records. That's, that's, that's what I'm getting out of this. And I, I really would like to speak to Rabbi Cooper about that, you know, because maybe, you know, if they're getting mixed messages on that side of the table, I'm kind of getting mixed messages on this side of the table, too. We're talking about the Simon Wiesenthal Center, which said that your album should not be distributed and that people should and, not listen for, to it. For people to think that I'm talking about, I'm talking about one man that happens to be Jewish. But if this man was green, then I would still talk about it. If he was black, I would still talk about him. I guess what hurts Jewish people uh, is the fact that you have to say he's Jewish. Why not just say Jerry Heller? Uh, well, you know, what you, when, what you end up doing is saying, okay, this guy's a Jew, and you just sort of said it in, in your answer uh, to, the, to this young man. You said, um, well, are they, as the Simon Wiesenthal Center saying it's okay for people like Jerry Heller and Jewish managers to essentially exploit young black men? I don't think anybody would say that, but the question, is it okay for Jerry... Heller and Jewish managers. I'm, is every manager who is white Jewish? Is every manager of a, of a rap? No, not, group? not at all, but the Simon Wiesenthal usually backs the Jewish community. 
Well, it but speaks what, out what, what I'm it saying is this. discrimination. No, what I'm saying is this. You know, every time I watch the news, the perpetrator is always identified. If they can't use their names, they identify them. Young black male, this. Young white male, that. Female, this. All I'm doing is identifying the perpetrator who I felt did me wrong. Nothing else, nothing more. Okay, but you understand... For me, for me to be anti-Semitic in the business that I'm in would be economical disaster and suicide. And uh, anybody but, in their right mind <laughs> wouldn't do that to themselves. But do you understand why the Simon Wiesenthal Center says... What is he talking about? You know, what is this guy saying? Is he advocating exterminating Jews? People are sensitive about that. Of course. They, they have a right to be. Okay, Sue from Illinois. Sue, are you on the line? Yeah. What's your question? What I understand is, all of a sudden, black men come out, and they're rapping. They're talking about what's going on in the community, and they have to get banned or stickers on their albums and stuff, and they're telling the truth about what's really going on in our community. But a long time ago, heavy metal, you know, like, people would rap or talk about stuff killing themselves, killing other people in their music, and nothing was done about it. Okay, Sue, we're gonna, that's a good question, but we're gonna have to wait for Ice Cube to answer it until after this commercial. We'll be right back. Ice Cube is here with us. I'm Barbara Nevins, and I'm talking via satellite from out to our Atlanta bureau, where Ice Cube is sitting, mic'd up. Ice Cube. Yes. Sue from Illinois asked why people are picking on you. Why do they pick on black artists when, say, the heavy metal artists advocated all sorts of weird things anyway? Why do you think people are picking on you? Well, you know, a lot of people don't take the time to, to follow Ice Cube's career and understand what, what Ice Cube's about. You know, I'm a young black man with very strong views, and I'm not the only one that holds these views about the system. I'm made in America, and what happens is they like to call me racist, but in fact, I'm the victim of racism. I'm just reacting to the system's racism, and how, how could you justify by calling me a racist when I'm just a victim? You know, it's interesting, if you listen to your lyrics, some of them advocate staying apart from white people. You have one song where you talk about castrating white men who sleep with black women. What's that all about? No, I'm, I'm talking about it's a metaphor for raping our people, not only physically, but of, of our mind, our identity, our religion, our culture, our freedom. That's what it is. And when, they, when I say that 400 years ago, they were... Uncle Sam went over and raped the motherland, Africa, of their people. That's what I call rape. You know, I have trouble because I, I see the anger out there. I feel but the anger directed at me what as it a white is, person. You Very see, specifically. Excuse me, you see the anger, but you don't understand the anger. That's the problem. Okay. People don't take time. People think that, you know, the 60s, that we got our, all the rights that we need and everything is all right. No, you can't give me a wound and just throw a Band-Aid over it. You gotta heal the wound, and then we're able to stand as brothers. But by you just giving me a Band-Aid for, for a gunshot wound, it's not gonna do it. And that's metaphorical, because what you were really saying as ju just you giving me my alleged rights, suddenly I can't, I can't recover. Is that what you're saying? We, we lost 400 years of, of teaching, of schooling, of, of any kind of knowledge of our culture. And we're right now in the process of getting that back through rap music. Okay, Cube, let's just go forward with that. Let's just take it to the next step possible. Let's say I understand. Let's say I really do stop yeah. to understand. Let's say I stop to understand and millions of other Americans stop to understand. What do we do next? Is there a future for us together without the anger? And how do we do that? Whites, blacks, Asians, Native of Americans? Of course. Of course. But it's most definitely on the system. 
Well, oh. forget the system for a minute, because that's like something that I can't deal I with. Can't, I, can't I can deal with you as a person. I, I don't know what the system the, means. Well I, well, I have to deal with the system, and, and in most parts, the people I deal with are in the system. I'm not talking about the, the guy next door to me who, who's, who might be a great guy. You know, that's who, not, I'm not angry with that person. Anybody that, that's down with, with the struggle and with what Ice Cube is, is trying to get out and trying to make people listen and, and understand our hurt, our pain, our cries, I'm down with that. But just understanding ain't enough. What are you going to do? Well, that's the point. I mean, if we just attack, say, the system, that doesn't mean anything. But if, if we together say we're going to do something, then we do it. Let's go to another call. Wade from North Dakota. Wade? Hi, Barbara. Hi, Ice Cube. How you doing? What's your question, Wade? Um, I was wondering, um, why do his lyrics are so negative? And kids don't, you know, he's explaining everything well. But when kids hear this, they don't logically sort everything out. They take it. For what you said so it's having a negative effect on them why don't Dude, you write positive lyrics that suggest ways to help things instead of feeding the fire of racism and everything do kids take it for face value or do you take it for face value the kids that i run across know who i am and know what i'm talking about and is down with the struggle the people who don't understand or don't take time to understand they just see it for face value okay Dave from Ohio. Dave? Uh, yeah, I just want to say that I, I really like the way Cube has changed to, to kick out, you know, a positive message to the young black. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, a lot, another thing I want to say is that uh, my man, let, let my man Cube say what he got to say. Stop cutting him off. And you, when, you, when he says something, you keep running wild with it. Let him speak. Let him say what he want to say. Cube, more power to you, man. Cleveland loves you. Peace. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Listen, I can't help it. I just run wild with it, too, Cube. I'm sorry. We have Don't Sharon from Mississippi. Oh, right. Oh, uh, you know, I want to know what was up. You know, like he said, you cut Cuba every time he got ready to speak, and you know, it's like every time he got ready to say something, you'll cut him. You know, cut him short. No, I want to know what was up with that. So he seemed like you putting the brother down. I guess I'm, just I'm a like, bad hey, person. Cube, you doing something good, man? I want to know what was up with you and the WA. I want to know if y'all getting back together or not. Thanks for Ho calling, Tyrone. Hopefully, we appreciate it. Ho hopefully, me and NWA we can work out our differences and become brothers because that's that's the ultimate goal. But they needed chastising, just like in some cases I might need chastising. We're all growing, we're all evolving, hopefully to be a brotherhood and hopefully to become a power in America economically and socially. All right, a power economically and socially. Are you advocating a separation of African Americans? Not at Americans? all. Not at all. I'm advocating unity. That's all I'm advocating is, is unity for us to love ourselves and love each other and, and be able to, to uh, fit into this society that we were kidnapped into. All right, well, in summing up, how would you do that? Give us, if you could give us your philosophy. The rap music. But what comes that's next? The only, uh, that's the only way I can do it. I don't have uh, a news station. I don't have a newspaper. And I don't have a radio station. So only way I could do it through rap music. What I have to do is break down all these hopes. See, what happens is America teaches us to want, 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 but only throws us crumbs. And then they get mad when we fight over the crumbs. Well, I guess what people have been asking and what I'm asking is what comes next. You lay it out there and you let people know why you're angry and what the problems are. And then what do you expect to happen? I expect people to wake up, to people to second guess uh, the system. The system, and the reason why you hear a lot of black kids talking about the system, how are they going to help us out the situation when they put us in the situation? So when I talk about the system, I want people to second guess it, second think it, and take up actions that, if, if they see that the system is failing them, take up actions. Thank this you. Is not, this is not a physical revolution. It's a mind revolution. Thank you, Ice Cube.